Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 video. So we just got the release of a new remote Lua loader for the PS4 and PS5 that allows you to send Lua scripts over the network to your PS4 or PS5 and it will execute them on launch. And this is done using a save file in a game Raspberry Cube. Essentially any games that run the Artemis engine could be ported for this to work. And this can be used as a viable entry point for loading future kernel exploits on the PS4 or PS5. So if we ever get a new kernel exploit for the PS4, let's say on 11.52, for example, we could essentially use this as our entry point to trigger that jailbreak. And this could also be used to load the UMTX exploit on the PS5. So it's a pretty exciting development coming from Charolnet and also many other contributors, Flats, Nullpointer, Gazine, Spectre and Chendochap, and a bunch of other people in the R&D Discord who were helping out. So the idea with this is that you don't have to create multiple save files every time something gets updated to load a different Lua script. You essentially just have one save file that runs the loader and then you can send multiple different Lua scripts to execute over the network. So not firmware dependent and works on the latest firmwares, which is good news. It does only work on Raspberry Cube at the moment, but other games will be supported in future. There's a few of them that I'll put on screen now that will likely get ported over soon. And generally, you're going to want to grab a physical copy of the game. They are only sold in the Japanese market, so you'll most likely have to get them imported. And it might be quite expensive to get your hands on a physical copy of one of these games. If you are on the latest firmware, you can grab a digital copy of one of the games or one of the demos if you have a Japanese account. But then if your console ever gets reset, you'll lose the license. So a physical copy is definitely recommended for this. So when we run the game, once it starts loading, it will execute the Lua loader. And then from that point, you can send a Lua script for it to execute using the Python script that's included, send.py. You just enter the IP address port number of your PS4 or PS5. And then you also include the file that you want to execute. And it will send that over the network and execute it on the console. And you can see here, it reads back with uh, your PS4 firmware version and the eboot.bin base address and libkernel base address and all of that kind of stuff showing that it is indeed working and of course it's the same exact thing on the ps5 load up the game it executes the lua loader you can then send the file using that same script and you will get the response back so what i'm going to cover in this video is how you can get the save file loaded onto a jailbroken ps4 a jailbroken ps5 and also any retail consoles that you have retail ps4s and retail ps5s using either Apollo or Save Wizard. I'll show you both in this video, lots of different methods on how you can get the save file loaded. If you do have a jailbroken PS4, you can use that to essentially create a save that's signed with the same account ID as a retail PSN account that you own so that you can then use your jailbroken PS4 to make a save that will then be compatible with any retail consoles that you have. So let's go ahead and cover that first of all. So. If you're going to be doing that, the first thing you want to do is get your PSN account ID. Luckily, there's this handy dandy website that's now available. PSN account ID, PSN flipscreen.games. All you do is enter your PSN account username. So we'll go ahead and enter my account name here for one of my PSN accounts. And then it will give you your account ID. You just want to copy that account ID and paste it into a decimal to hexadecimal converter like this one on rapidtables.com. And then it's the hex signed twos complement that you want. That is your account ID. So once you have the account ID of your retail PSN account, all you need to do is activate that on your jailbroken PS4 by of course heading into the Apollo save tool, going to the user tools section. And in there you can activate a PS4 account. You can see that my account is already activated here, but you would select an account that's not activated and then enter the account ID of your PSN account in here. So once you have that entered and it's activated, you're going to want to reboot your console to make sure it's properly applied. And once you've done that, we can then create a save file on the game Raspberry Cube. I'm just using a fake package version of the game here as a test. So all we're going to do is create the save file. You just start the game, skip through the beginning section and then press square to bring up the menu. Head over to the save section and create a new save file. Once you've done that, you can close out of the game. And at this point, we can head back into the Apollo save tool again head over to the HDD saves section, find the game, which shouldn't be hard to find with all the Japanese letters and select it there and then go over to copy save game and copy it to either the USB or the hard drive. I'm going to copy it to the USB drive and replace the files on the USB, copy it to the USB here and then unplug that USB drive and plug it into your computer. So from this point, 
All we're going to do is head on to our USB drive, go to the PS4 folder, the Apollo folder, and then find the decrypted save data for the game. Once you find it, we're going to delete all of the files in here apart from the SCE system folder. So then we're just going to download the code as a zip file for the remote Lua loader and extract that out to your desktop. And we're going to copy all of the data from the save data folder from the project into our USB save folder. And that will get the decrypted save on there. So once you have that transferred, we're going to open up the inject.lua file and make sure the platform is set to the platform that you're going to be running the save on. So if this save is going to be running on a PS4, you're going to keep it on PS4. But if you're planning to load this on a PS5, you're going to want to change that to PS5. So at that point, we can go ahead and save the file, unplug the USB drive and plug it back into your PS4. So once again, we're going to go back on the Apollo save tool here. We're going to select USB saves this time. And of course, we're going to select that save file that we just replaced. And we're going to copy it to the hard drive. And that will replace the save on the hard drive with our decrypted data from the Lua loader and that should now have the save done. So at this point if we close out of the Apollo save tool and run the game it should in fact run our Lua loader and as you can see it does in fact load the Lua loader so we have it up and running and because this save has been re-signed with my official PSN account ID I can now copy this save to the USB the encrypted version from the PS4's own menu by heading into uh, the settings and going to the save data management and from there I can select the save on the system storage and copy it to the USB storage and that will get the encrypted version of the save that's re-signed to my profile and it will copy that out to my USB drive. So with that I can then copy that to any PS4 or PS5 that is activated with the same account ID so any retail consoles that I have that are on the latest firmware that have that PSN account on there I will be able to load that save on those consoles now. So if I want to copy that to a retail console, I can just plug in the USB drive into that retail console and then do the same thing where I just go to save data management on the PS4 or PS5 and then go over to the USB drive and copy to system storage to copy the save to the system storage of that console and I'll then be able to run the save if I have a retail copy of the game. So that's how you get the save file up and running on a jailbroken PS4 and then use that jailbroken PS4 to then get the save file transferred to retail consoles that are activated with the same account ID or of course a jailbroken PS5 that's activated with the same ID will also work. Now if you don't have a jailbroken PS4 with Apollo that you can use and you can instead use the save wizard with the zip files that I'll leave in the description. So those same save files that I just created on my jailbroken PS4, I will leave them linked in the video description in zip archives. All you have to do is download the one for your platform, PS5 or PS4, and then you can use the save wizard to resign it to your profile. So the way you do that is you open the save wizard application, plug in the USB drive, and then go over to the resign section, select the option to import, select one of the zip files for either PS4 or PS5 and import that save file. And then Save Wizard will re-sign that save for you to your account. And once that's done, you'll then be able to plug that USB into a retail console and copy the save from the USB to the hard drive in the same way that we showed. And from that point, you'll then be able to load that save on your retail console. So that is another way to get it up and running. So what if we want to get the save file on a jailbreakable PS5? Uh, so that we can potentially trigger the UMTX exploit with this in the future. Well, in order to get it on a jailbroken PS5, it might be a little bit more tricky. There is actually a save mounter that was released for the PS5 recently, but I haven't had any luck trying to get the save on there using that. Instead, the way to do it on the PS5 would be to activate your PS5 again with the same account ID, which you can do using John Tornblum's offline account activator. If you don't have this, you can head over to the GitHub project, which I'll leave linked in the video description. All you got to do is download the package file and also download the off account file. So the offline account activator zip file, download that as well. Once you have those downloaded, the next step is to just copy the package file to the root of a USB drive, connect it up to your PS5 and install it with the debug settings package installer so that you can get that on there. That will install the homebrew launcher. And from there, you want to load some kind of FTP payload on the PS5, uh, whether that's through something like ETA Hen or through uh, just the FTP payload. So run FTP on the PS5, connect to your PS5 through FTP. And then we're going to go into the data folder on the hard drive and create a folder called homebrew. And then inside that folder, we create another folder called off account. So O-F-F-A-C-T. 
or I don't think it really matters what you call it. But anyway, just create a folder there and then go in that folder and extract the data from the offline account activator into that folder. Once you've done that, you can then go back onto the exploit host on your PS5 and you're going to want to run John Tornblum's Elf Loader, which automatically runs if you're using the UMTX version of the exploit. But if you're using the old IPv6 exploits, you're going to have to run that manually. So make sure that John Tornblum's Elf Loader is running and then you can run the web server payload afterwards. Once that's running, you should be able to run the homebrew launcher. And then if it loads up successfully, it should all be working. You can then select the offline account activator, give it a few seconds for it to initialize. It will bring up a screen like this, and then you can press circle to get to the actual offline account activator. Select one of your accounts that's not already activated, and you can then enter the account ID. Now, the good thing about this is that the saves that I've provided in the description are using the same account ID that I've been using in this video. So you can literally just activate a a new account with the same account ID from my PSN account and the save will work with it. So you can just use the same account ID that you see me using here in this video with the saves that I provide in the description and they should work. Otherwise, if you have your own jailbroken PS4 or save wizard application, you can re-sign it to your profile and then activate the account with your profile's account ID. So with that done, we just need to get the saves copied to the PS5. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually just copy it from the USB to the hard drive. So what we have to do instead is just replace the files with FTP. So what you're going to want to do, again, is run the game initially on the PS5, create a blank save just so that you have all of the folders created on the hard drive. And then once you have the save created, all we have to do is load up FTP again on our PS5 and then head over to the user folder, the home folder. And then inside there, we have our accounts folders. So select the folder for your account select the save data folder. Then you're gonna look for, of course, the title ID of the game. And inside that folder, you will have the saves and you're just gonna to want to delete them and override them with the ones from the download for the PS5. Copy those saves over. I also renamed the save data file to sdimg underscore save data. That's how PS4 saves appear on the PS5 with that sdimg underscore at the beginning of the save file the file that does not have the .bin extension. I don't know if that's actually required, but I just tend to do that anyway. And then that should be it. The save file should now be applied with the correct account ID that matches the ID that's already activated on your PS5. At that point, we can run the game. And as you can see, it will load the Lua loader because it's all set up correctly. So anyway, that's multiple ways that you can get the save file copied on to a jailbroken PS4, a jailbroken PS5 and also resign the save files so that they can be used on retail PS5s and PS4s as well. For any future PS4 and PS5 kernel exploits that come out for those versions, you'll now be set up and ready to run those. So yeah, that is how we get everything set up. Now, there are other ways of doing this as well. There is a backup and restore method, although that tends to kind of like reset your console because you're restoring somebody else's backup. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily consider doing that until some kind of exploit comes out that we can actually use this to trigger. Otherwise, you're resetting the console for no good reason at this point. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend the backup and restore method until there's actually something that we can we can run this on that makes sense to you know go through resetting your console. Otherwise, you can use these methods that I've shown in this video to get the save file on there without having to restore a backup. So anyway, that's how you get the network Lua loader up and running on your PS5. So any new Lua files that come out that can be executed with this, you'll be able to use this Lua loader, send those Lua files using the Python script and get them running on your PS4 or PS5 for any future exploits. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll see how it develops. But that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.